Rome. Her glory once brought light to the world, driving the shadows away. But it could not last forever. They whisper that the end of days is upon us. It's been a while since Total War Attila came out, but the game has received updates and massive mods in the past months and years, so I thought it was time to check out how Attila was doing, reviewing the campaign and the mods, and see if it's worth playing in 2021. But first, I'd love it if you liked the video, left a comment, and subscribed to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. So, without any further ado, I give you Total War Attila in 2021. After close to 500 years as master of Europe, the mighty Roman Empire is forced to tend to the barricades. In the north, from the dense forests of Germania, the German and Gothic tribes are driven south, flooding the tall Roman walls, grinding them into weak sand castles. In the east, the Persian Empire and its vassals hope to reconquer Syria, Palestine and Egypt, while from the steppes in the northeast, a new and terrible figure reveals himself for the first time. Attila has arrived. The year is 395 AD and the Roman Empire is already split in two, east and west. The Total War series lets you take control of selected historical realms that existed during the selected time period, from the Romans to the Persians, Germans, Saxons, Vandals, Goths, and yes, the Huns. What's more is that the differences between them is not simply cosmetic this time. Like in the spiritual predecessor barbarian invasion from 2005, you can attempt to restore the Roman Empire as the Western or the Eastern Roman Empire, with their challenges and opportunities differing vastly. Playing as the Emperor of the East, demands that you manage to keep the Persians at bay while keeping trade with the West alive, while at the same time quickly getting ready to wage war and defend against incoming barbarians from the Northwest. Public order will also be an issue, forcing you to prioritize your armies or building happiness producing buildings in your cities. Sounds hard? Then get a load of this. Controlling the Western Roman Empire will demand everything of you. Sure, the first turn might seem like a fairly decent time for the Westerners. Your empire is massive and for the time being, your income is sufficient. But underneath this beautifully crafted world lies a spiral of death and despair for your armies are spread thin, your empire torn apart by the struggle between Western Christianity and Roman paganism, and while at the same time the peoples of Iberia are preparing to revolt against you and African tribes are moving north towards your cities, Frankish and German armies will siege to your northern border and lay them bare. Britannia is soon lost when a disloyal general takes Londinium with him, and it is not long until Ostrogoths flood Illyria and make it impossible to defend. The Western Roman experience might seem like a trash can fire, but it offers perhaps the most engaging campaign ever, forcing you to always be on your toes and be painfully aware of which provinces you can afford to lose and which you have to maintain and defend. Although challenging, the Roman and Persian experience both offer a relatively traditional total war experience, i.e. building your cities, armies, defending and attacking. Attila offers another and new experience as well, letting you play as so-called horde nations, small factions which are not tied to permanent settlements in the same way. As the Huns or other tribal nations, you don't really start with a given territory but are instead given relatively strong armies. These hordes are just that. As a horde nation, you can move fast across vast distances while being able to temporarily settle in a mobile camp. Here, you're able to establish your own miniature towns that can be packed up. Settling for a few turns may provide you with sorely needed resources like food and gold. This means that you never really have to conquer established cities to survive, making for a vastly different type of campaign. A new mechanic allows you to raise cities to the ground, striking the traditional empires where it hurts the most. Think of it as nuking before it was cool, but you have to be careful. Attila adds a genius for fertility mechanic to the game, where every province harbors a unique level of fertility which provides you with more or less food depending on this level. For example, Egypt is abundant with food, just like it was historically, while the sands of Sahara are less so. When raising a settlement, you destroy some of this fertility, making it harder for your horde faction to collect food should you ever temporarily or permanently settle in this land. At the same time, the game introduces a climate change mechanic, making it so that the level of fertility decreases at particular crossroads, simulating a little ice age in this apocalyptic world. Food is therefore an important resource to keep in mind, since it feeds your armies and keeps them loyal, while keeping your settlements happy. 
Like in other Total Wars, you are given a series of victory conditions you must complete in order to win the campaign. Attila, however, is divided into different chapters depending on your gameplay, allowing you to fulfill certain conditions within the time limit, which will net you sorely needed gold coins. Every chapter revolves around Attila in one way or another, beginning with his birth and moving through the important stages of his life. Every new stage is introduced by a medicine cutscene, and together with the faction introductions, they make for unique experiences not really seen in Total War for a very long time. What you'll quickly come to realize is that Total War Attila offers an insane amount of factions. Not only are there a ton of nations to choose from right from the get-go, but there are many non-playable emerging factions you most likely will encounter throughout your game time. Many of these are potential Roman successor states like Italia and Gaul, which will form if you ever lose certain regions to rebellions. This adds a whole nother dimension to the game, as Romans will have to fight Romans, and barbarians will face a divided Roman Empire, which might even add more challenges, because certain minor Roman factions may even be stronger in specific locations than the main one. However, Attila also allows you to use diplomacy much more effectively than in Rome too. Since many of the new Roman factions are one province miners, taking their city will effectively allow you the choice of either retaking it fully or make it your puppet, creating a de facto buffer zone between your core empire and the evading tribes, lending you armies you don't really need to pay for. This makes diplomatic strategy a crucial aspect of Total War Attila, especially if you want to maintain a large empire. Sadly, the AI is far from perfect, not yet having been given the care seen in newer Total War titles like Three Kingdoms or Troy. Trade is sometimes hard to achieve despite benefiting both nations, but at least now every faction leader has modifiers which will let you know if they might deal with you or not, like if someone admires or hates strong empires or other religions. What's great is that Attila brings back the family tree and even vastly improves upon it. The family and generals are now more important than ever, and you can hire family members and other nobles to important military offices, in addition to appoint governors to your provinces, making Attila into something of a role-playing game. You can even select heirs, adopt people into your family, arrange marriages, be corrupt in order to gather gold, and gather support in order to maintain control of your faction. It is perhaps the best implementation of the family tree ever in a Total War game, and needs to be added into the next historical Total War title. But Total War is not all about diplomacy and strategic warfare. Like the name suggests, it's also about bloody real-time battles and glorious tactics. It's on the battlefield where most wars are won, after all, and a good general takes advantage of both their soldiers and the terrain to turn the tides of battle. A heroic victory can often mean the difference between greatness and destruction, even though the game rarely recognizes your victories as heroic. The uniqueness of Total War is that you control your armies directly on the battlefield, controlling hundreds and thousands of individual units rather than groups of 5 or 10. It's a truly great experience Attila brings, with units behaving better than in Rome 2, and the battles both look and feel grittier. Archers are deadly, and so are cavalry, forcing you to really understand which units to use where at all times. The units are also beautifully crafted, and you'll definitely be able to tell the difference between a Roman, a barbarian, and a Persian army. The battles you'll be fighting will depend on the faction you're playing as, so expect a ton of initial defensive battles as a Roman factions, and many more offensive battles as any other faction. Where Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion was played more or less on the same map as the original Rome, Attila's campaign map is quite different from the one in Rome too. The world is darker, the weather more evident, and there are more details to find. It is still one of the most beautiful campaign maps in Total War history, even six years after release. I often feel compelled to just admire the battle map as thousands of soldiers clash, and it's hard not to be overwhelmed at how epic Total War Attila can be. The game is still not optimized for newer multi-core CPUs, so be prepared to need a good single-core CPU and a great GPU to run the game properly. But boy does this game look good at the high settings. If you're willing to pay for them, Total War Attila offers some really great expansions as well. In the first major expansion, the Belisarius campaign, you take control of Belisarius, an Eastern Roman general tasked with reconquering the West for Emperor Justin. It's fun to play as a Roman horde faction, even though you can also play as the newly established barbarian kingdoms that have conquered former Roman territory. In the second, and in my opinion, the best expansion, you get to play centuries later as Charlemagne or other factions during that time on a centralized and massive map of Western Europe. This is an early medieval time period where you must establish the Frankish Empire. You can even conquer Europe as Muslim Cordoba, the Kingdom of Italy, or establish an early Kingdom of England. It's a great campaign and I love the attention to detail here, with the units looking very different from the base game, while the art style on the campaign map has been overhauled and is truly beautiful and reflecting the early medieval time period. 
Total War Attila is still an amazing game in 2021, and I highly recommend playing it if you are an old or new Total War fan. It's got great variety and tons of replay value, while offering many different campaigns and ways of playing those campaigns. It's beautiful, gritty, detailed and vast, and with the new family tree, governor system and a simply wonderful UI which in no way clutters the screen but still manages to provide detailed information, Attila is perhaps the best Total War made in recent history. If the time period of late antiquity bores you, you might want to hear what models are available. Total War Attila might just offer some of the most exciting models since Medieval 2, and I'll be listing some of them here. First of all, and perhaps most impressive and exciting for the traditional historical Total War players, is the Medieval Kingdom's 1212 AD mod for the Attila main game. This mod changes the time period to 1212, a late medieval campaign where you can play as any faction from Norway to France to Egypt and Byzantium and attempt to reclaim the Empire's former glory as a sort of spiritual successor to the Eastern Roman Empire in the Attila main campaign. Campaign. Here, the modders are creating a fully functional Holy Roman Empire and a crusade and jihad system the player can take advantage of. The units are beautifully made and the faction mechanics like technology trees and buildings are fleshed out quite often. It is a massive mod which allows you to change the music of the game with an add-on mod, a modification which you can even use independently of the main mod. This way, you can hear that amazing Medieval 2 battle music while playing Attila and by the lord if it isn't amazing. I highly recommend checking out Medieval Kingdom's 1212 AD if you're into the medieval period, but feel like Medieval 2 is getting a bit old. The modders have done some truly amazing work here. The next mod is called Age of Vikings. This is a mod for the Charlemagne expansion, which fast forwards until after the split of the Frankish Empire and the Viking Age. Here, you can play as the different kingdoms vying to establish the Holy Roman Empire once and for all, either as the Eastern or Western Frankish Empire, or even Italy. You can play as Viking nations, or Iberian ones, and the units are updated to reflect the time period. If you love the Old Gods time period from Crusader Kings 2, or the early start date in Crusader Kings 3, then this is perhaps the perfect Total War alternative. The third mod I wish to feature is the Ancient Empires mod. If you want to go back to the glory days of Rome, but dislike Rome 2 and want Attila features, then this might be the perfect mod for you. In Ancient Empires, you begin the game during the Second Punic War, and the factions, buildings, art style and units reflect the time period. It's really cool to be able to play during the golden age of the Roman Republic, but with Attila mechanics, and even though Ancient Empires isn't fully finished, you can easily play a great campaign as Rome or other major factions. Furthermore, you're able to download a Lord of the Rings custom battle mod with a possible campaign in in the future. You can download the Radius Total War Campaign Overhaul mod, which revamps the campaign with new units, mechanics and bug fixes, and a ton of other smaller quality of life mods, some which makes the Roman city models go from looking like decaying cities to actual Roman stone, a mod called the Tetrarchy, which allows you to play during the time of Constantine the Great, and so on. All in all, Total War Attila is worth getting for the mods alone, and with the wonderful campaigns and the exciting battles and mechanics, it is perhaps the best Total War game in the past 15 years. I really hope you'll check the game out, and if you already own it, then feel free to download the awesome mods completely free of charge and test them out for yourself. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!